everyone, welcome to part two of my series of videos on history as an area of knowledge. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about the historical method and how we do history. So, the historical method. Although there is not a rigid prescribed method such as in the scientific method where you follow a series of step, lock, step generally and everyone follows the same step, Historians do conduct their research in similar ways. They do identify that there's a problem that needs explaining, perhaps a motivation for a particular event is missing or a particular group is um, underrepresented in history, so they recognise that there's a problem that needs further research. Then they gather as much relevant information as they can about the problem. Uh, about the problem. Then, you know, looking at that evidence, they might form a tentative hypothesis to explain the historical problem and then they would rigorously collect uh, more evidence and organise it into an argument, taking particular careful um, interest in the verification of the authenticity of those sources and the truth of the information and its sources. And then after they've done that, they would select, organise and analyse the most important collected evidence uh, and draw some, some, some conclusions about what that evidence tells them what's the answer to the historical problems and then of course they would record that conclusion in a meaningful narrative telling the story arguing their response to the historical problem. So I want you to take a second, pause the video and think about this question. What are the problems that stick out to you in regards to the historical method? Think carefully about the natural sciences uh, method, uh, the scientific method, and see if you can think of any problems that stick out in the historical method. Once you've had a little think about that, start the video again. So just a quick rundown of the important terms that you need to know in history. Basically we have two types of historical sources. Firstly there's primary sources, a document, recording or physical object that was produced at or around the time under study. So this might be a newspaper article, it might be a news um, segment uh, on, on the news, it might be journals, eyewitness accounts, um, diaries, letters, photographs, historical artefacts such as clothing, art, literature, so something that was produced at or around, you know, within a couple years of the, of the time under study. Then the second type of source is a, six, a secondary source, a second-hand account or interpretation of historical event produced at a later time. So a secondary um, source has usually gotten primary sources together and then synthesised them to produce a new source such as a textbook, an encyclopedia, a website, something like that. So when we're talking about doing history, we need to examine how historians actually do history. And to do that, we need to talk about academic perspectives and historiography. So most, if not all, academic historians have a particular worldview. They might, for example, believe that all the problems in the world are caused by economic factors. They might be uh, believe that all the problems in the world are because of a class struggle, and you would call that a Marxist historian or something like that. And what they do is they bring that worldview to the study of history, and they apply that lens to any investigation they undertake. They might claim their objective, but it's impossible to divorce this worldview from our um, interpretations of historical evidence, so it's important to remember that all historians uh, bring their worldview to their work. When we examine the perspectives that they bring, we call this historiography. When we're examining histo historiography, it's basically studying the history of histories, and so what we do is we examine what school of historical thought the um, historian is bringing with them. So mostly we can classify academic historians by the worldview or perspective that they generally bring to their work and they're considered to belong to a particular school of history. It's not that actually these places exist as institutions and you go to the Marxist school of history. It's just called school of historical thought. There's actually not... <laughs> not a school that they go through. So on the, on the screen you can see some examples of schools of historical thought. So for example, Marxist history, they focus on the relationship between classes and class struggle. There's the Annals School, which historical events are part of a larger trend over great time periods, so they don't focus on a single event, but they focus on the wider context of how history happens in great periods of time. 
there's social history so that's history from below focusing on the everyday person or those underrepresented in traditional history such as women and minorities there's revisionism which is particularly interesting um, they challenge and reinterpret the orthodox views of a particular event there's feminist history so rereading and in many cases rewriting history from the female pr perspective particularly when it's been written from the male perspective traditionally and then there's great great man history that focuses on the roles and achievements of heroes and usually men that's why it's called great man history so I hope you've enjoyed my really quick rundown of some of the key concepts involved in history as an area of knowledge. I know that I haven't applied them to any questions or anything like that and you're going to be doing that in class. So um, please just take note of the particular terms that I've used, the particular issues like perspective bias, objectivity um, and how we examine those through historiography and bring those along to class ready to discuss.